Tony is arriving in about 45 minutes. And how we got him here was I said, hey, Tony, I'm mentoring Henry, and he is interested in film, every aspect of it. And he needs to practice in interviewing for like documentaries and setting up a set, lighting and all that other stuff. Would you mind coming in? Since he doesn't know you, would you mind coming in and he'll interview you and ask you questions about who you are and what you do and Tony being Tony, Tony said yes. So <laughs> the thing Tony doesn't know is we're making a documentary about him because he's an amazing person that loves serving others with his talents. Plus, I don't think there's ever been a documentary made about a person with that person in the documentary and also not knowing that they're gonna be in a documentary about them. <laughs> so Henry will ask him all the questions and then we'll have Tony take like a five minute break and Tony will think that's so that I'm just building into Henry. But the truth is we're just talking and seeing, okay, of the list of things that we wanted to get, what do we wanna get more of for the documentary? So uh, yeah, it should be pretty fun. Henry, how we doing? Doing great. Yeah, we're doing great. All right, so first, just introduce yourself. Uh, my name's Tony Aerosmith. Um, I'm a commercial photographer here in Cincinnati. Oh man, how has Tony inspired me? <laughs> how long is this documentary? Describing him in one word. <laughs> That's hard. <laughs> one word would be phenomenal. He's always been just a very giving person. He's proud of what he does, but it's not from a, a place of ego. Yeah. It's, it's from his heart. I knew this would happen. As a little kid, I loved to, to draw. I mean, that's what I went to college for just art, painting, and drawing. And in the midst of college, um, that freshman year, I discovered photography. My business partner was the bookkeeper at the uh, first photography studio I worked at. He was very driven. He, he knew his passions, and he just pursued them. There was a point in 1986, late 86, that we kind of started discussing, you know, what if we did this on our own? We just always worked well together. When we first started working together, he's, he's, he was just very easy to work with. He's the creative side, I'm the business side. It was, it was very scary. At that time, I was a single mother of a five-year-old. I put my condo on the line for this partnership that we started. Scary as it was, I knew we could do it I, if we just kept our focus and and we did. We lucked out. We've been in business for, I don't know, 35 years. Another project that, that I've worked on for I think 22 years is a, a Halloween project. Um, and it began as just simple. We were going to some friends for a Saturday night Halloween party. My son was just born. He was still in a little pumpkin seat. Tony said, I let everyone know I'm gonna bring my camera gear and we'll just set up in, in Beth and Chris's garage and we'll, we'll take a group photo and take individual pictures of the kids. So we set up a backdrop in the garage, a couple lights. In the first year, I just photographed the kids from a low camera angle. And I thought, okay, this is kind of fun. This might be something to, to be fun to continue. I've been with Tony doing the Halloween pictures for 14 straight years. 16 years. My youngest was a baby, so it had to have been 22 years ago. Everybody loved it so much. He started thinking about doing like an open house at his work for his clients and our friends. The Halloween project was never a cost to anyone. We just wanted to give them something that we had a talent to do. Well, the first year we did the Halloween shoot, I don't think anybody knew what Tony was trying to accomplish. And so when we got those first shots back, how he really captured the essence of each of the kids in the shots was extremely fun. So that first year led to the excitement of future years and one of the things that it helped us do is get our Halloween costumes in order way ahead of time. <laughs> Tony was really engaged with the kids. He would be down at their level. He would encourage the kids who especially who were shy to really bust out of their shell a little bit and come to life before the cameras. But Tony was really good about kind of making the kids forget about the camera and allowing their personalities to come out. So you know, when I look at those pictures, they're my favorite pictures. 
because they really capture the kids. They weren't these portraits, they were the kids really acting the parts that they were in the Halloween costumes, and I think that's why they loved those shoots so much. My prior experiences with photographers have always been very rigid, and you stand here and you pose like this and I'll take this shot, and so he was none of that. I want the kid to do what the kid does at that age. Because I want, as you look back on this 10 years later, I want you to be able to look at that and go, yep, yeah, that's what Susie did when she was two years old. And it could have been sitting there sucking her thumb as, you know, as a cowboy or a soldier. I don't know, whatever it was, but it was, it was something that's relative to what that child does versus me coaching them to do everything, you know. Tony just seems to have that capability of just relaxing the room. Right, and so that everybody's comfortable, even in you know multiple people shots or anything else like that. More of a Halloween party than it was just pictures being taken. Sarah would give out loot bags and have little candy in it, and there would be um, cupcakes and treats and cookies, and it was all decorated and stuff. And the kids just would come in and all hang out show off their costumes to each other until it was their turn. You kind of don't want to leave when your session's over. You just want to kind of stay and hang out. And we've gotten some amazing shots thanks to him because we've just been so relaxed and comfortable with him. He had lots of people coming in and out. And the thing about Tony is that when you get there and it's your time to go, he gives you 110% of his time, of his focus, of his energy, and he makes you feel like you're the only person and that your kid is, is the only one that, that, that matters to him at the moment. He's always made people feel comfortable even when they say, oh, I don't know if my kid's gonna do it. It's kinda like a challenge, oh, I can prove them wrong, I can make sure that their kid's good. And he always did, he always had great shots. So while the parents you know, might be like, oh, I really want this picture to be great, the kids are relaxed. So they're not intimidated for the, they're eating snacks, they're putting their Halloween costume on. They go over and then all of a sudden they're in front of it and if they get weirded out or uncomfortable, Tony takes the time. You know, there, it wasn't this rigid, augmented, you know, 30 minutes, you're done, 30 minutes, you're done. If you needed a little more time, that's okay because somebody else's family might have been done in five minutes, he might have had the perfect shot. It is kind of cool, he's got the candy. He, get, he gets the kids all hopped up on sugar, <laughs> okay? And then he's got drinks for the, um, the adults. So it works well. He's a smart man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's a smart man. <laughs> Everybody just went out there and they, they just did what they wanted to do. Uh, and he captured every single moment. I'm always amazed when we see the pictures on how he has captured each one of our kids' personalities in one photo. And it's not the costume. The costumes change year to year. It is just the pose or the facial expression. We've done a few photo shoot or two with other just local photographers with a family. And I feel like it's been me trying to get them uh, not so posed, but Tony loves that not posed image. So he, that's what I love about him. I love the quirky nature of all of his photographs. And when it's kids, I think they're just, they're, I like the ones that are full, full tears because that was the day we had. He makes them fun. He doesn't go like, oh, like jump in there take your picture and get out. He'd rather spend two hours and make a picture perfect than spend two minutes just to get people through. Even if the kids were like nervous about getting in front of the camera, um, it went away because then they started having fun and they weren't even really thinking that they were getting their picture taken. They were just playing and Tony captured that. Pretty much anything that has to do with Tony, he just creates fun. Like he is such a people person. So when it comes to the Halloween experience and them coming to it, like they talk about it and they anticipate it and they're like, I'm gonna make this pose, I'm gonna do this. And Tony just kind of like goes with it. And they look forward to it. We talk about it. We've, we're talking about Halloween costumes now. Yes. <laughs> and, and Halloween yes. is the most. And we didn't know, just month, start month talking month about them, I mean, they've been no. talking about them. You know, for that to be the thing that we talk about months in advance, you know, I love that they look forward to it. It's a fun thing for them to do and to capture, you know, that moment in their lives. Mm -hmm. My kids personally always express themselves with who they were and who they wanted to be at that time, you know. When I asked Chloe when she was, I guess, three, she wanted to be a pirate. She insisted on being a pirate for Halloween, and I said, sweetie, just that's fine, but help me understand, why do you want to be a pirate? And she said, ah, pirates get to go, arg. <laughs> I was like, well, all right then. My daughter at three is a pirate, because one, it's my daughter, and she just has her sword up going, arg. I remember one family, um, they always dress up as a theme. And the funny thing is, I do that with my family now. So I guess it kind of rubbed off on me. <laughs> and, and one of the really cool things about it that I love 
is watching the different costumes that the kids come in that A, their parents have made and watching the labor of love their parents put into that. Because I remember as a kid, my mom making some of my stuff. And then B, it's even watching the cultural trends of what the kids are wearing. Superman's always there. Batman's <laughs> always there. All the different Disney characters, um, Sully and Mike from um, Monsters Incorporated. I mean, I can go back just and I can tell you what year that was by the year those movies were out. So that's been really fun. So the year that we went to the portrait project, my kids were too young to complain about what they were wearing. And so we dressed them up like Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy, which was funny to us, but maybe not to them. <laughs> my husband got onto the SWAT team for Cincinnati Police, and so he dressed the boys up in SWAT gear to do like a photo shoot. This was a very special memory. He has this picture of my son this last year of him. He dressed up like Thor and he hit himself with a hammer on accident. Tony captured it. The very first time uh, I remember uh, lying on my back holding my son up, you know, I think he was balanced on my feet and on my hands. It was literally like Adam was flying and he was so little and he was just laughing. He was just giggling. And here I was really tired because, you know, when you have a three and a half to four month old baby, you're not sleeping that much. And it was just such a moment of joy to watch the three of them, Tony and Trey and Adam, in this moment of laughter and silliness. When my son was old enough, he was one and he was a chicken and there were chicken feathers everywhere. So our photograph, it might be one of my favorite photographs of him. But a few years ago, he actually offered to do it for our pets, and we thought that would be so much fun. We had six, seven, I can't remember how many animals, some seven animals on set, and so they were coming in and out and trying to make sure that each one felt comfortable. One of the animals was incredibly scared of the lights, another one was freaked out by the sound, um, So, but it was awesome. He was really, really good working with each one of them. What we've got is the awesome result that we ended up with. Our favorite pictures we call the sensei and the ninja. So Samuel was about two years old and we dressed him up in this. It was a Chinese outfit that our friends actually had sent us from China and I asked her for permission if she would be okay if I used it as a costume. And so we weren't sure how he would take a picture or not because the first year he took it, he sat, so he wasn't very active and then Nathan was dressed as a ninja. And Tony just had them get in the camera and just go, and he gave uh, Samuel a sword. And Samuel, the way he held that sword, and he, Tony captured his essence um, of who he is today. It is the best picture. It so is, we, it is. we really did debate for a little bit, Putting should that be front. our picture, should that be our Christmas picture? <laughs> and we decided, okay, probably not. We probably need to have the whole family in the picture. But I tell you what, we got so many comments about that picture that, picture. that year. We sent Christmas cards to a bunch of people, mm -hmm. including like young single guys that yeah. we're in a relationship with that, you know, never say, oh, thanks for your Christmas card. But all of them texted mm -hmm. us and were like, dude, that picture of Sam yeah, and Nathan, Sam. best picture ever. I only really buy costumes for the pictures. Like, not for the kids to go trick or treating or anything. The kids just, it's such a family tradition that we, we love the photos. So this is definitely the first time I've ever interviewed a gorilla and a goat. So, gorilla, what is it like leading a gorilla life? You eat lots of bananas and you sleep. And then you fight with brother and sister and family. You don't get banana. You sleep. Life cycle. One of my favorite pictures was the Teletubby picture. We coordinated and had the four kids each do Teletub, a different Teletubby, and it was hysterical. My very first year I did it, I had a, a little boy that was uh, a vampire, and he just walks out and he's got the, the Dracula brooch on, the collar up, and he, I mean, he's four years old, but he's barefoot, you know? And it just, that kind of made me just keep doing it. My kids always dressed uh, according to what they were into for Halloween. And uh, in one picture, I had uh, a ninja. My son, I think he was a ninja like five years in a row. And <laughs> so he really thought he was a ninja, but it's just very um, heartwarming when you go back and you see those pictures and you know, man, this is this was my kids at this, at 
this point, and it's just, I, I won't have this again. So it's just very comforting. I think the neat thing was documenting the kids' growth through the years and seeing the different costumes that an individual kid had and kind of following their, their Halloween story through. He's been able to capture a lot of the kids for, you know, 15 years. I wanted it to be about the kids. I, I wanted it to be about their costumes and them and their faces. And when you looked at it, that's what you saw, not, not the background. And I've debated over the 20-year period. I've wanted to change the background constantly. You know, but I just, I kept it there because of the constant of watching the kids grow up. It was a mark that my kids, they remembered, hey, when are we going to get our pictures taken? I love tradition. I think the rhythms of tradition, the things that you look forward to, those are the things that our kids will remember 30 years from now, right? Going to Tony and getting our picture taken, that is the one thing we do every single year and they remember every year and they look forward to every year. And we have, you know, a photo of it. These are the moments that my children are always going to remember. Capturing all those memories in all these different years is important because they go, you know, go by so quick. Tony always wanted to get these out by Thanksgiving, so he would work during the day if we weren't shooting, and he'd even take them home every night. He was bound and determined that he was going to get these done. Christmas was the absolute last deadline he would have. He always managed to do it. So he spent hours countless hours editing um, these these pictures to make them perfect. You got the green grass, you got the light green grass, and you have dark green grass. I know light green's the best grass. This last year, all my kids dressed up as superheroes and it, they were awesome. It's still my husband's screenshot. It's his favorite picture of all my kids together. I mean, he has it saved and documented, like kind of just on all of his screensavers for all of his things because he just loves that picture of them. We always get a magnet to put on the fridge. I always take it to work with me. I replace them every year. I have a frame uh, that we, I put on my desk. Refrigerator yeah. <laughs> over the years, yeah. Or be like backdrops and computer screensavers in one of our main walk-through areas. So even if, you know, every time I walk through and see, I can glance over and look, you know, remember them when they're young. I did frame some of them. Uh, I do have some um, on the computer. Uh, and then I have, um, I have them all kind of sleeved in a book. We have them in an album. We were excited. We did the shoot. And just like every parent, you can't wait to get the pictures and see what they look like, right? But before we got the pictures, my dad, um, had a massive heart attack <clears throat> and um, you know obviously I didn't think about it anymore <laughs> until, until um, I got up to the hospital and I emailed Sarah uh, real quick and I'm like when will the photos be ready I don't want to rush you or anything but just curious on a dime they turned those photos around and I had them and I got to share them with my dad and though it hurt and he got a good laugh out of it. You know? Those little things, you know, they meant a lot and it was, it was nice to be able to share it with them. There are people that have called and said, I have a certain frame that I put it in every year. Another one would talk about how they have cutouts of their kids and put them on their doors. These are things we didn't really realize that were really happening. More than the pictures, right? It's feelings and it's, it's, it's sharing the, the love mm -hmm. of, of family, so. To think that uh, I have another memento, I don't know if he knows how special that meant because I've lost a lot of things. <laughs> So when I was a kid, we had pictures. Um, and there was a period in our time, in our life, that um, we became homeless as a family. And those pictures were lost. Um, I can be somewhat of a paparazzi with my own family <laughs> because of my experience having lost the pictures of, of myself when I was young and of my siblings, um, my mom and my dad. Uh, and so any opportunity that I get to be able to capture those moments, I treasure them. And so when um, that Tony was taking these pictures and I was like, for free? <laughs> and when I saw what he captured in our kids, I was just like, we're gonna, if he does this every year, we are there. We're gonna make it happen. We're gonna cancel whatever we need to cancel. He does it selflessly um, because that's time he's giving us. Um, energy he's giving us and not asking for any monetary um, 
compensation for it. Outside of this project, outside of the Halloween project, he loves to use his talent to help, like his photography that he did in New Orleans. When I think back of some of the projects that I've been able to work on over the past probably seven or eight years, um, New Orleans is one of the ones that stands out the most. And New Orleans was another life mark, I'll call it, where kind of things that changed me along the way or made me look at things a little differently. Because of the floodwaters, lots of these families lost these precious family heirlooms in their family photos. And some photographers caught wind of that and thought, we have something to offer here. We have a skill that can bring value to the lives of these people that we're building relationship. So they decided to create this photo project. Tony Aerosmith was one of those photographers. A lot of families lost their family uh, portraits and their family albums, so uh, we had a whole entire team dedicated to um, taking portraits of families and kids down in New Orleans. But Tony came in, got everything set up, made it really easy for us to take images, made the families that we had scheduled very, very calm, and we got some really, really, really good images um, from that. And so this photo project specifically, I think the beauty of that was that helped individuals feel known. That helped individuals feel seen in the midst of a tragedy that they suffered. So that picture maybe represented some normalcy for them. They could reflect back. One lady, I remember taking her picture and she looked at it on the camera and she just started crying. And she was like, I, I haven't had a picture like that of myself in 20 years now. Well, one of the projects Tony worked on during our time down in New Orleans was Cafe Reconcile. Cafe Reconcile is a program here in New Orleans that helps disconnected young people uh, get reconnected into employment and education. So our job is to work with them through the culinary arts to help them overcome those barriers. And um, they will learn everything from busing tables to actually food prep to actually cooking. And uh, Tony would go in and take portraits. It wasn't even about the photography. It was about seeing kids find a path. And he kind of just lit up talking about giving back and redemption stories. You know. Those, those kids that work through Cafe Reconcile and their portraits and how proud they are of what they have accomplished and where they came from. Those, those are moments that are captured that, that I hope they reflect on fondly. Tony likes to give of his talent, not only being a photographer, he was also a big brother. Tony took on Michael and he still to this day is very close with him. Tony was my, or still is my, uh, a big brother through Big Brothers, Big Sisters of uh, Greater Cincinnati. We were matched when I was uh, eight years old. He, you know, the things that, that made me trust him was uh, that, you know, he was fun. Um, you know, he was interested in what I wanted to do. You know, I, I was easy to pick up even as, as a eight-year-old kid. So early on, it was, you know, him trying to be that friend um, and, and trying to be that uh, older male role model, like I said, um, and then um, you know through you know through my teenage years, he kind of had to put his you know foot down a little bit with me and, and be that that almost that father figure um, that I didn't have because uh, that's what I needed at the time. You know, I didn't like it at the time, but uh, you know, thank him for it now to take on this you know young eight-year-old kid with some issues that he didn't have to take on. Uh, and, and he did, he, he took him head on. His selflessness is, is a big part of you know, who I am today is because some of the things that, you know, that, that he did for me uh, as a kid and, and growing up. To see other people happy makes Tony happy. He likes to give, he's a very generous human being and he gives all the time. I know like with the Halloween project, it is a tremendous gift to those families and a tremendous sacrifice on his time just to do a project like that. It's not a necessary thing, but it's totally a reflection of his generous heart to do it. And I think that that's awesome. What I see in Tony is a guy who absolutely is doing the thing that God made him to do. Yeah, he inspires me because he's a creative guy, he's a kind guy, he's a generous guy. It's just refreshing to, to know such a good guy and, and have known him for so long. Great with people. He has honed and crafted a skill that he 
is really good at and makes a living at. And I want my kids to be around those kind of men and women. He's really caring, so like if you need something, he'll help you out for the best he can. Um, no, Tony means the world to us. Um, No, he's, he's a wonderful guy. He's kind, he's generous, he's hardworking. Um, he's always been there uh, for all of us. Always looking to serve others. He makes you want to love people better. But I mean, especially for us, he would just like go above and beyond just to make sure we had like a good childhood. He's been a great dad. He's still my dad, he'll still like always be my dad. He spends the time thinking about other people and like, figures out how he could rise to the occasion before the occasion comes up. He's, he's always given of himself. Um, he's very selfless. And I think it's important to him to be able to, to do that, to, to, to be that kind of guy. I mean, you know, he's, he, he doesn't have a, you know, a, a meter running and, and expecting, you know, to, uh, to, to get something out of everything that he does. He's, he, he's just, he's there for you. In the world we live in, which is nearly always transactional. It just feels like loving kindness to a approach someone who honestly and legitimately just wants to serve. And that's Tony. I mean, he, he does it because he loves it and he loves other people. It's that simple. You know, I think it just comes across as um, being almost a tr just a true friend and just being there for people. And I think that's really nice. It's nice to just experience him on a personal level. I mean, every time I turn around, there's another story of him helping someone or doing something, um, either photography related or not. You know, he just has always um, put himself out there. I think it's important for him to feel fulfilled, to just help other people when they need it. And I think like, he just wants to see people happy. You know, my belief is that God has given us all these gifts and talents, right? So if we were to just keep them in, you know, and not pass them along or not use them, you know, I feel like that's a huge part of our life that's been kind of wasted. But time is the only thing we can't really get back. So to give your time um, and energy towards something is huge. You have to give back to be able to receive anything, in my opinion. Um, you can you can take and take and take and take, but if you don't give anything, I don't think that you really get anything out of anything. Sarah and Tony have the ability to make people feel really cared for and special. It's not many people that would give of themselves in this way. You know, all of the baking prep, all of the props, all of the scenery, all of the time they spent with the kids really invested themselves in, the, in their friends and their family. It was really significant and so much appreciated. For me, it's showing love. It's a way that he shows love. He uses art to, to show love. Like, I think that it's really beautiful to watch somebody do what they're gifted in and who they naturally were created to be to love people well is super, super awesome. Well, I think my dad is one of the biggest people person I know, and people love him, which I mean, who doesn't want to be loved when you're <laughs> such a nice person? It's really easy to love him. I think it's so important to live your life like that and serving others and, and recognizing when other people need things. It brings out the best in you, it brings out the best in other people. Um, and I think everybody that's around Tony, um, he does bring out the best in everyone. It's good to have a person or multiple people around you that are just completely selfless like that, that just make it a little bit easier. Like, well, if he can do it, I can do it too. Tony, I would just love to say thank you. 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 For giving us the very best family pictures we've ever had. For being there for me and always being my dad. For giving of your time, for giving of your gifts. For being a great artist. Thank you for being you. Thanks is definitely not enough uh, for what you've done in my life. For all the times that maybe you've not heard thank you enough, I want to say thank you. Thank you for being generous and thank you for loving. It's been an honor to know you. It's been an honor to be your friend. You are an inspiration to me, not only as a photographer, but as a person. I know that I can count on you for anything. I admire you and I'm always trying to practice your patience. <laughs> I consider you a very dear friend. I love you like a brother, and I'll get emotional, but he knows I love him. 
Thank you, Tony, for all the time that you have given us, for all the time you've given everyone here, um, the families that have come to you. So, thank you. Great. That's it? Yeah. Woohoo! Cool. All right. He picked Cameron up and was holding him, like, up above his head. And I was like, mm, I don't think that's a good idea to do that with the baby. And he's like, we're fine, aren't we, Cameron? And he kind of jiggled him. And Cameron threw up right in Tony's mouth. And he was going, take the baby, take the baby. And I was laughing so hard that I couldn't move. And then, so he's sitting there going, take the baby. And he, oh, it was so, and we still to this day will be like, take the baby.